Okay, what we have here is a local grass-fed long loin. And we're gonna break this thing down into its various parts. It's gonna be a few part video. Uh, and we're gonna have some fun with it. And you're gonna see where, what kind of muscles are coming from this section. First thing I wanna point out is this tag right here. This is my, it doesn't seem like much, but this is how I know I'm getting exactly what I'm getting from the abattoir that I, that I ordered it from. And this is how the healthy butcher creates some level of transparency. So this tells me that this was Jim Martin's beef and it, this was the, the side weight. So the, the side weight, 363 pounds, and it was processed on June 14th. Seems rustic, I know, but means the world to me as, as a butcher that's trying to sell things for a certain level of transparency. Okay, so what we have here is our full long loin. So we have tenderloin, strip loin. Back here I have the top sirloin. This is the flank steak proper. This is a tail end of the skirt steak. Right underneath the skirt steak is the bavette or the vacio. In Canada it's also known as the bottom sirloin flat meat. And on the bottom end of the top sirloin there's a little muscle here. It looks like a Nike swoosh and that is part of our tri-tip. So those are the muscles that we're going to extract from this. So, no further ado, we're going, to, we're going to start off by breaking this into two. So we're going to get our official long loin and our flank section. Now this has been a really wet spring, and so the grass has been growing exceptionally well, which is the reason why you're seeing all of this beef suet right over top of our tenderloin. That's really, really nice to see uh, with our 100% grass-fed beef. I like to just get myself a mark just above where my strip loin is. And that's basically going to tell me where my flank section is going to end. You look at that fat, just the color of it. It's got this nice yellowing of the fat, and that's just coming from the beta carotene that it's getting from all the green grass that it's been eating on. I love to see it, but it's what separates, it's one of the reasons why grass-fed beef does not usually get graded under the A system. It's because it's not pearly white. All right, so now we've separated our fish along loin from our flank section. Or this is also known as the bottom sirloin. I'm gonna move my bottom sirloin off to the side and I'm gonna get started on this piece here. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take off our tenderloin. Before I do that, I'm just gonna clean up some of this beautiful suet. This suet is, this, is what we'll use to make our beef tallow, our rendered beef tallow. And it's because suet, or the, the kidney fat, tends to be the cleanest fat. Uh, which means that it'll be the best for cooking with it. It'll have the least amount of other impurities in it. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to follow this spine region all the way down to remove our tenderloin. So what I'll do is I'm going to get the tip of the face of my knife and I'm just going to scrape along this bone. So I don't really need to see what I'm doing because the bone is telling my knife where to go.
once you get it started, you can start to seam out most of the tenderloin with just your hands. It's a lot easier when you have the beef hanging. You can allow gravity to really do the majority of the work. But it doesn't make as good of a video. Okay, so there is our tenderloin. All right, next up, we're gonna separate the top sirloin from our strip loin. And so, when we take off the top sirloin from the strip loin, this takes it from a long loin to a short loin. All right, so if you've ever wondered what the difference is between the term long loin and short loin, it's whether or not the top sirloin is on it. Now, I'll do this so you can see it. Not particularly more comfortable for me, but that's okay. This, this is part of the hip bone, and it's gonna go straight down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna allow my knife to tell me where this ends by following it straight down. Now normally, when you the general rule for breaking off the top sirloin is with the first vertical vertebrae. I'll show you what I mean by that. Here you've got a vertebrae that's on an angle. Here's your first vertical vertebrae, all right? They use that rule because this bone can tend to end anywhere between here and here. And so if my tenderloin was still on here, I don't know where this is ending. And so if I need to break off the long loin to cut T-bone steaks, the, the best rule to follow is to cut here. But because the tenderloin is removed, now I can just follow this paddle bone down and let the actual bone tell me where it's actually ending. And in this case, it's actually ending closer to this sideways vertebrae right here. At this point, I am going to use a little bit of gravity. Let you all see this. So by snapping it, it makes it a lot easier for me to complete this cut. And so now I can separate my top sirloin from my strip loin. My next cut is going to be called chiming. And that's where I'm going to cut a diagonal cut along the spine bone so I can remove these feather bones from either side of the strip loin. So I'm going to chime it on the bandsaw. This is a lot easier to do with the bandsaw. I can do this with a hacksaw, it's just not particularly fun. So come on over to the bandsaw and we're going to make this chime cut. Okay, so for this cut, like I said, it's going to be a diagonal cut on my bandsaw. It's a straight cut and it's just to release the two sides of the feather bones. So first I'm going to line up my strip loin and away I go. So what I'm hoping to achieve is to separate them. So I'm gonna have to give it another swipe because here my feather bones are still connected to my button bones. So the first step is I'm going to remove these side feather bones. And like I was doing before, I'm always keeping the face of my knife pressed up against these bones. And that's how I can ensure that I'm removing bone and not muscle. Next step, I'm going to start to remove these feather bones on top. Okay. 
Normally I only expect to see one rib bone in my long loin. For some reason they cut my long loins a bit bigger, which means that my rib section is going to be a bit smaller. Should only be one one rib bone in this long loin. Finally, I'm going to remove these button bones. This is just part of the vertebrae of the spine. Okay, and so now my last step, I'm just going to remove some of this bone dust from the side here. And that's just a composite of both bone fragments and fat from the bandsaw. Oh, one last little piece of bone there. Now this strip loin is ready to manicure. But this is, uh, when you hear the expression a two by one, strip loin, uh, when you're buying whole strip loin, they're referring to the, uh, the size of the tail um, or a zero by one. And so if for me to make this a zero by one, I'm gonna have to cut this down so I have no more than one inch above the eye of the strip loin. And there is a prepared strip loin.